Hi students, in today's session we are going to deal with the determination of refraction matrix. As you have seen earlier, an incident ray represented by the column matrix x1 lambda 1 undergoes refraction to give rise to a final refracted ray. The refracted ray vector represented by the column matrix x2 lambda 2 is obtained in matrix methods when the refraction matrix operator matrix small a small b small c small d acts on the incident ray column vector x1 column matrix x1 lambda 1. So, refraction matrix and the operator incident ray vector vector in a represent j in the column matrix that is the x1 lambda 1 in the column matrix in the mughali act j in the refracted ray vector in the matrix that is the x2 lambda 2 in the column matrix vector Allah de namakivide ray diagram of yogicha rays of arakenda avishimilan martha. Okay, so what we are going to do here is namalavada chayan shamikinada small a, small b, small c, small d in the refraction general 2 by 2 matrix ile a, b, c, d. Kutkemai kandavidi kan shamikiana. For a refraction matrix, what are the values of small a, small b, small c, and small d? Like how we found for the translation matrix. So, to find out the refraction matrix, this is the figure that you have to consider. So, mm, this is your spherical surface. This curved surface is your convex spherical surface having a radius of curvature capital R. If C is the, uh, the center of curvature. So, R is the capital R is the radius of curvature here. Uh, it separates two media on either sides. On one side the refractive index is mu1 and on the other side the refractive index is mu2. Now, a ray of light is incident on such a refracting surface. Here, let capital A B A P be the ray which is incident on the refracting surface that is this ray and it undergoes refraction as and the refracted ray is PB. Now the ray AP is at a distance x from the z-axis. This is our axis of symmetry for the lens. The lens if this is the lens, then its axis of symmetry is given by this, that is the z-axis. Now, let x be the distance of the point P on AP from the z-axis. So, you got one coordinate. Now, Cn, this dotted line Cn represents the normal to this curved surface. It represents the normal so that... The angle that AP makes with the normal, that is the angle of incidence, is given by angle APN. And angle of refraction, that is PB, is the refracted ray. And the angle that it makes with the normal, that is small r, angle of refraction, is angle CPD. So, angle small i and small r are the angle of incidence and refraction respectively. Now, AP and PB makes angle, angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 with respect to the dotted line M1, M2. M1, M2 is a line drawn parallel to the z-axis and AP makes an angle alpha 1 and PB makes an al angle alpha 2 with respect to M1, M2. Let phi be the angle between Cn and M1, M2. Phi is the angle between M1, M2 that is the line parallel to the z-axis and Cn is my normal. If the angle between M1, M2 and Cn is this angle is phi. 
if this angle is phi, then m1, m2 and az, that is the x axis, z axis are two parallel lines, which m1, m2 and the z axis are two parallel lines cut by the transversal NC or CN. This is the transversal. So, the alternate interior angles must be equal. That is, if this angle is phi, then this angle is also phi, vertically opposite angles. These two are two vertically opposite angles. And if this is phi, then this angle is also phi, alternate interior angles made by two parallel lines. Okay. So, this is what all things you must know in this figure. That is, you have a spherical surface here. And this line represents the z-axis, that is the axis of symmetry. AP is your incident ray. PB is your refracted ray. This dotted line NC or CN represents the normal to the surface. So that this angle is your angle of incidence, angle between the incident ray and normal. This angle is your angle of refraction, smaller angle between normal and refracted ray. Then I draw a dotted line M1, M2 uh, parallel to the z axis so that the angle between the incident ray and m1 m2 is alpha 1 refracted ray and m1 m2 is alpha 2 now the angle between m1 m2 and the normal is taken as phi so if this angle is phi then again the angle between the normal and uh, the uh, line m1 m2 on this side that is the vertically opposite angle the, if this is phi then this is also phi if this angle is phi then the uh, angle which I am showing here is also phi because uh, these two are alternate interior angles. Okay, And the point P on AP is at a distance x from the um, z axis and C is the center of curvature of my lens so that capital R represents the radius of curvature of the uh, refracting surface. So, these are the informations given to us. Next, by Snell's law, we have on either side of the lens, on the left side it is mu1, on the right side it is mu2. So, refractive index of second medium with respect to the first, mu2 minus mu2 by mu1 is equal to sin i by sin r by Snell's law. So, mu1 sin i is equal to mu2 sin r for small angles. Sin i is nearly equal to i, sin r nearly equal to r. So, mu1 sin i equal to mu2 sin r reduces to mu1 i and mu2 r. And they are equal. Mu1 i must be equal to mu2 r. Now, from the figure we have i is equal to alpha 1 plus phi and r is equal to alpha 2 plus phi. Let us look at the figure once again. So, I, the total angle I is a combination of alpha 1 and phi. Total R is a combination of alpha 2 and phi. So, that is what is substituted in the place of I and R. So, that I get I is equal to phi 1 plus alpha 1 plus phi and R is equal to alpha 2 plus phi or mu 1 is equal to alpha 1 phi plus mu 2 is equal to alpha 2 phi. Uh, now what I do is I take mu2 alpha 2 on one side. Mu2 alpha 2 is equal to mu1 alpha 1 plus the remaining terms containing phi I group together mu1 minus mu2 into phi. But what is phi? Again we will go back to the figure. What is phi here? So let us consider the triangle PCO. This is phi here. So tan phi is equal to opposite side that is x by adjacent side r or for small angles phi is equal to x by r so that i am going to substitute here so i get uh, my equation becomes mu2 alpha 2 is equal to mu1 alpha 1 plus mu1 minus mu2 into x by r from the figure for phi by substituting for phi now i substitute minus p is equal to mu1 minus mu2 by r here P is the power of the refracting surface and P is given by minus P is equal to mu1 minus mu2 by R. So, I replace it here mu2 alpha 2 equal to mu1 alpha 1 minus P of x, P into x. Now, mu2 alpha 2 and mu1 alpha 1, I replace it with the optical direction cosines. 
we know if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are the optical direction cosines of the ray before and after refraction then lambda 1 is equal to mu 1 sin alpha 1 for small angles it is simply alpha 1 so mu 1 alpha 1 is equal to lambda 1 mu 2 alpha 2 is equal to lambda 2 so those two values can be substituted here in this equation so i get lambda 2 is equal to lambda 1 minus px okay so that is my first equation lambda 2 equal to lambda 1 minus px and x1 equal to x2 is equal to x. We have just one distance here x for the point p. You see in the figure the point p is at a distance x from the uh, axis of symmetry. You just have one value of x here whether it is for x1 or for x2. P. Uh, at the point P, X is equal. So, X1 is equal to X2 is equal to X is the second equation for X. Now, what you have to do? We consider, so these are the two equations for direction cosine and the distance X uh, in terms of for the, uh, under the case of refraction. Now we use the general matrix equation that is for any general matrix x2 lambda 2 is equal to a b c d into x1 lambda 1. You multiply like how we did last time for translation matrix x2 is equal to a into x1 b into lambda 1 lambda 2 is equal to c into x1 d into lambda 1. These are equations 3 and 4. Compare. We compare 3 and 2 first. 3 and 2 you get x2. Here I have x2 equal to x1. Here you have x2 is equal to a x1 plus b lambda 1. So a is equal to 1 here when you compare the coefficients. And what is b? b is equal to 0 because it, in this equation you have no lambda 1 term. Okay. So a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0. Next for lambda 2. Lambda 2 is equal to c x1 plus b lambda 1. This is equation 4. You uh, compare it with this equation, Roman letter 1. So, you get lambda for lambda 1. When you compare, you get, uh, uh, when you compare those equations, you get C is equal to minus P and B is equal to 1. So, small a, small b, small c, small d is equal to 1, 0, minus P and 1. Where minus P means it is mu1 minus mu2 by r. So, this matrix is uh, represents my refraction matrix. So, for any ray, if it is undergoing the operation of refraction, you first take its um, incident ray vector as a column matrix and allow this refraction matrix to uh, operate upon it so that you will get the final refracted ray column matrix as x2 lambda2. Okay, so this is the refraction matrix. Now, uh, I find out the determinant again, just like how I found for the translation matrix. R is equal to determinant of 1, 0, minus P1, which is again equal to 1. So, refraction matrix is given by 1, 0, minus P and 1, where minus P is mu1 minus mu2 by capital R. So, I hope this session where we determine the uh, refraction, the form of the refraction matrix is clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, please do contact. Thank you.